are Catholic charismatic still Roman Catholic? That is the message that I have for you today, uh, ladies and gentlemen, a very important message. We're living in a day when the uh, inroads that have been made by the Roman Catholic Church are extremely uh, great. And the Roman Catholic charismatic movement is one of the pieces in this whole puzzle, folks, that has absolutely uh, entered what you would call the Christian uh, church world of today. So it, this is something that needs to be dealt with. Keep in mind, I am speaking to you once again as a former Roman Catholic. I also was part of the Catholic charismatic movement for several years. So you need to know this, folks. Uh, I'm going to start with a quote from a book uh, by Michael de Semlian. It's called All Roads Lead to Rome, the Ecumenical Movement. And a good book, by the way. Let me just give you uh, some portions from that book right now. This is from chapter one, the background to ecumenism. It says, Tom Forrest, a key figure in charge of Rome's decade of evangelization program and at the head of the whole Catholic charismatic renewal organization, certainly puts the doctrines of Rome to the fore. At a training session for Roman Catholics at Indianapolis 90, he spoke with enthusiasm and deep conviction about his renewed faith in view of his importance to the ecumenical movement of the 1990s. He is quoted here at some length. So before I go further, uh, this man, Tom Forrest, uh, I do recognize the name uh, very much so because he was the leader, as it says here, a key figure. I mean, he was in charge of this whole evangelization within this charismatic movement. So I know the name very well. Let me continue. My job, my role, our role in evangelization is not just to make Christians. Our job is to make people as richly and fully Christian as we can make them by bringing them into the Catholic Church. No, you don't just invite someone to be a Christian. You invite them to become Christian. Catholics. You invite them to come with you as a new parishioner of your Catholic Church. We don't just have the Eucharist as a symbol of the body and blood of Christ on our altars. We have the body of Christ. We drink the blood of Christ. Jesus is alive on our altars as offering and as a banquet of love. We become one with Christ in the Eucharist, the very body of Christ. As Catholics, we have Mary, and that mom of ours, queen of paradise, is praying for us till she sees us in glory. So that's from All Roads, uh, Lead to Rome, the Ecumenical Movement by Michael de Semlian. So uh, hopefully you, you, you heard that and you, you, you're like, like, whoa, you should be if you're a Christian, you've been born again. So this is what I've been talking about for years, folks, this uh, this type of a unity, but but here we have the leader of this uh, charismatic uh, movement here, this renewal, and uh, what he's saying, yeah, he's talking about the Eucharist. He's talking, this isn't just a symbol. Now keep in mind that uh, all the people who were martyred by the multitude, some say millions, uh, probably true, uh, that were put to death by the Church of Rome, they refused to believe that the Eucharist was the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ as the Church of Rome teaches. So here this man, Tom Forrest, makes no bones about it. He's a priest, and he says, look, we don't just have this as a symbol. He's on our altars. We have the body of Christ. We drink the blood of Christ. He's, Jesus is alive on our altars. So we become one with Christ in the Eucharist. So here, listen to me now, folks. Uh, the, the Catholic Church, they, they have uh, Eucharist, Eucharistic Congresses that, that they meet uh, at certain times of the year. You, you need to be aware of this. This is the false teachings of Rome. So this is the charismatic movement, folks. Don't, don't, don't miss this here. Something I want to say to you right off the bat here, folks. Don't ever forget this. The Roman Catholic charismatic movement is 100% Roman Catholic. It is Roman Catholicism on steroids. 
Don't ever forget that. So when, when you hear your pastor telling you that it's okay to join in unity with the Roman Catholic uh, charismatic people, don't, don't forget what I just told you. You're hearing it from a former Roman Catholic. And, and, and as I go through this, you'll see why I speak the way I do. Uh, this is what the Apostle Paul said in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. He said, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Don't ever forget that. Folks, the Church of Rome including the Roman Catholic Charismatic Movement, if ever there was a verse of scripture that described them, it's this verse right here. That is a church that is filled with doctrines of devils, seducing spirits. What you see taking place in the land today, this is it. This was the warning. Uh, listen to what Paul said. He said, the spirit speaketh expressly. He's talking about the Holy Spirit, also called the Spirit of of truth and said in the latter times this is what's going to happen some are going to depart from the faith as a result of giving heed listening to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils keep in mind that the spirit of god that same spirit of truth redeemed my soul pulled me out of the cult of roman catholicism oh yes he did glory uh, to his name. So as I said, I was in that uh, movement along with my wife, my wife Kathy, uh, Catholic Charismatics, for a period, and um, you know, you know, during that time, folks, my prayers to Mary increased, didn't de decrease. You see, so so don't fall for this lie. You know, people are under the impression, oh no, they're they're more like a a, a true Christian church, the Pentecostal. Uh, you know, you know, see. Uh, this, this is how people fall for it, folks. Now, keep in mind that all the same doctrines that are in the Roman Catholic Church are in that Roman Catholic charismatic movement. The Pope is still the head. Now, think about this. The Pope is still the head of the church. So they're in that. The Pope who calls himself the Holy Father. Now, that should be enough for anybody to leave the church, folks. If you want to obey the word of God, the Bible says, call no man your father. That's what Jesus said, call no man your father upon the earth. For one is your father, which is in heaven, folks. You find that in Matthew 23, 9. One is your father. So just the fact that he's called Holy Father should send you a running. In fact, every priest in every parish throughout the world are addressed as father. Oh, yes. So, so the Lord Jesus Christ knew what he was doing. He was warning, but few people listen, folks. People are seduced, and it's been going on for a very, very long time. Another false doctrine, a doctrine of demons, the Roman Catholic Mass. They declare it to be a propitiatory sacrifice which satisfies the justice of God for sins committed against him. That is blasphemy. That is part of the charismatic movement also. Don't forget that. The Eucharist, transubstantiation, that's what takes place when the priest uh, is going to change that um, bread and wine into the uh, body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. That goes on in the Catholic charismatic movement the same way, exact same way, as it does in any other uh, Catholic church uh, that would not be charismatic. So uh, go. let me just quote to that uh, uh, thing that Mr. Tom Forrest, that priest, said. He said, we, we don't just have the Eucharist as a symbol of the body and blood of Christ on our altars. We have the body of Christ. We drink the blood of Christ. Jesus is alive on our altars as offering and as a banquet of love. We become one with Christ in the Eucharist the very body of Christ. So the Catholic Mass, folks, they, they offer up Christ in a sacramental, unbloody manner. That's what they teach. That's blasphemy. But, folks, you get these uh, so-called anointed preachers of today. Uh, you know, there are a lot of personality cults. And, and, and they get over on people because people follow man. They don't follow the Lord. They go after man. It's like they become Protestant popes. <laughs> That's what, what they're doing. They're joining hands with Rome. So, so the reformers stood against Rome, 
And these people are letting it, let, letting it come right in, as I said, like a, a Trojan horse. So, you know, my wife Kathy, she actually uh, became part of a charismatic uh, prayer group before I did. We, there was a couple of different uh, parishes that had prayer uh, groups, and, you know, we, we partook of that. So, you know, she was actually ready to be installed as a Eucharistic minister. What's that? So that would be somebody who uh, trains to, uh, so that they can take that host, that Eucharistic host who they believe is Jesus Christ, the body, blood, soul, and divinity. And they, they, they would carry that uh, host, several of them, to visit people who might be bedridden or in a nursing home or a similar situation. They can't make it to a church or something. So you're going to go over to them and, and give them communion. It's this whole rigmarole. And um, she was all set to be installed officially and become uh, able to do that. And she got sick. Now that we look back, we know it was the Lord that prevented her from uh, going through with that. We're, we're grateful, absolutely grateful. So uh, thank God. So, you know, she when she first joined um, that, that one particular group, you know, they, they would pray in a room and, and they had a little folding chair with a little statue of Mary on it. The, the, their version of Mary, obviously, is a graven image, a statue with rosary beads wrapped around it and they would light a candle and then they would pray. You say this is it's like cultish. It is cultish. <laughs> so this is the charismatic movement, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that 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 is you know what that is, folks. It's spiritism. Another word you can use. It's witchcraft. Okay. You 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 calling upon Mary. Okay. Uh, it's not the gospel of Jesus Christ. So you see, uh, the more we started to read the Bible, you see the truth sets you free, and you start reading things and. Um, that's the way it goes, you know. So I also said we were into that uh, those apparitions at Medjugorje. You know, many of these people uh, into these charismatic prayer groups, they were into that uh, apparition. And some of them even visited, and you know, they uh, told us about the uh, the rosary beads, the chain between uh, that was holding the beads, changed from. Uh, the color of silver to gold. So things like this. And we, we became interested and we were like, whoa, wow. So I know I've spoken about this before, but you need to know this, folks, because I want to make it clear to you, we were in this whole thing. And, and I'm uh, shouting a warning once again to those people who might be in it to come out of that and also to pastors who have no problem working with Roman Catholic Charismatics, folks. They're not standing for the truth. You know, I, I'm, I'm showing you that the doctrines of Rome are counterfeit doctrines. They're, they're in opposition to the scriptures. They're in opposition to the word of God. Oh, yes, they are. The rosary praying, it's the same. They pray the same Hail Marys. You know, when we went to these healing masses, uh, uh, where the singing is more lively than in a uh, regular Catholic mass, after the main part of the mass was over, the the, the, the priest would be up on the uh, platform there on the uh, where the altar is, and people would be lined up literally by the hundreds. This would go on two to three hours, these uh, so-called healing masses. And I saw people, quote, slain in the spirit. But you know what, folks, during the whole time, you know what was being done? The rosary was being prayed over and over and over again. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among, and so on and over, folks. I did all of this stuff. The idolatry is the same in the charismatic movement. Graven images everywhere. The second commandment is missing also in the charismatic movement. Folks, I say it to you once again. The Roman Catholic charismatic movement is 100% Roman Catholic. The teaching of purgatory, the counterfeit place that does not even exist. Billions upon billions of dollars have been taken in because people believe there are people in purgatory, masses, Catholic masses, the sacrifice of the mass is offered up for these souls in purgatory. Billions of dollars have been made from the donations that would come in from poor, deceived souls, folks. I know I did this same stuff. 
Their false teaching on baptism. They teach that at infant baptism, that is when you become born again, that you become a child of God. Total false teaching, a doctrine of devils. Oh yes, I want you to know this stuff, folks, because you're not going to hear it because the modern day church, especially the non-denominational churches, the inter-denominational churches, and uh, stuff like that, folks, it's it permeated. People don't even bat an eye at this stuff. <laughs> it's been going on for so long. There was a man by the name of Larry Thomas, he was involved in a very large uh, ministry where there were uh, a number of different ministers, and what they would do, I think they met every every day, you know, and, and they would take turns, you know, one would come forth with a word and they'd pray together, I guess, before each day, which is a good thing to do. So, you know, one day Larry Thomas, uh, what, what he did, it was his turn to speak that day, and what he did, he took his appointment book with him. And you know, sometimes an appointment book, they have all these little uh, philosophical sayings at the top. You know, not Bible, but little different sayings. So what he did, he started quoting those little uh, sayings at the, at the beginning, at the top of the books. And, and what he did, he mixed it with a couple of these and thous. You know, he made it sound like really, really uh, spiritual. And he says, you know, people are like, hey, <laughs> preach it. <laughs> Preach it, Larry. Amen. He said, revival almost broke out. And then, then he stopped and he let them know what, what he was doing, the, the charade. And, 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 and he wanted to show them. He says, look, I'm preaching from my appointment book here. This isn't the Bible. And, and the people were listening and cheering him on, but he wasn't preaching the word of God. Do you see that, folks? And, and, and the point that he was making, he was preaching that day on the topic of discernment. So, so, you know, I tell you that for a reason, folks, because many people walk into churches. We're living in a day when many people can be manipulated in, in the pulpit. You know, there are different things that are, you hear in a lot of churches. I know sometimes people mean well, you know, you hear it over and over. Turn to your neighbor and say this. Turn to your neighbor and say that. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand here. You know, you can, you can be manipulated very easily easily folks in, in churches like that when the solid teaching which confronts things of the day such as uh, this issue of the uh, Roman Catholic charismatics it, it, people don't even think about this stuff folks because they've been seduced they've been they've been lulled to sleep by the uh, modern day uh, preachers who, who who preach smoothly that's what that's what's happening uh, folks so you, you need to uh, know this, you know, as I said before, you know, we went to these uh, with what uh, are known as healing masses at one of those uh, charismatic healing masses, you know, the priest came out uh, at the beginning of the part where he would, you know, lay hands on people. But before he did that, he, he came out one time with a uh, holy water, you know, the, the altar boy would be holding this pitcher brass pitcher and he would have to wand and dip it in. I used to be an altar boy so I know exactly what was going on. So he would dip it in and, and we were right there in the like first or second row. So when, when he, he, he would dip it in and, and, and shoot the water, uh, there was a lady maybe in the 20s, 30s, I don't know uh, how old she was, right behind me. And um, the minute he did that thing with the holy water toward us, toward her too, she, she, she was knocked out cold. I mean, she hit that uh, wooden pew so hard, it made a, made a big sound too. Laid out flat, folks. And I was like, whoa. In fact, I, in fact, at that time, I was a deceived human being. I said to the person next to me, I said, look at that, that's the Holy Spirit. It wasn't the Holy Spirit, folks. That was the devil at work. See, the devil wants to fool people into thinking that there's power in that so-called holy water. You know, sometimes you see these movies with... You know, they're casting devils out of people and and uh, and they'll have a crucifix and they'll, they'll all across the hands. The devils, the demons, they're laughing, folks. They're laughing. They want you to think that there's power in witchcraft. People are deceived. What you need, folks, is the word of God. Keep in mind, folks, I'm speaking today as a former Roman Catholic. It was the truth of God's word that set me free from stuff like this. My purpose in doing 
uh, this video is is to alert you and bring people out who are still in there, folks, because uh, I know what it's like to be in it. I know what it's like to even tell people, including the people that were in that uh, those prayer groups with us when we would tell them and said, no, we're not doing this anymore. It's so you try to tell them about Mary. And that was, that was the end of the conversation. In fact, when we left that... Um, uh, one particular prayer group, you know, a lady soon after mailed us like a uh, an article from a paper, and it talked about how um, one of the Eucharistic hosts, hosts uh, the Eucharist turned into flesh and blood. And Kathy and I are like, whoa, look at this. You, you see, that was the devil trying to uh, throw in his, uh, his last claw, you see? We were out. He's, he's trying to yank us back into that system, folks. You know, the stuff that went on, I should do a video just on things that happened uh, in my life after that, things that would happen on the street or at other places, you know, in spiritual warfare. I got to do something on that. I, I've been, uh, you know, praying about that. Should I do it? Uh, I think I might do it, folks, just to show you that w what goes on, you know, spiritual warfare, how the devil wants your soul. So, you know, the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 30, verses 9 and 10, that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not, unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. Oh, boy. Now, that fits uh, what's going on with the modern-day church and the Roman Catholic charismatic movement. People like smooth talkers, folks. You know, the manipulation in the pulpits. You know, that's, that's what happens. And, 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 and that's why... Uh, this has been going on for so long, and that's why it's getting worse, folks. And it is absolutely everywhere. You know, I think of uh, TBN, that's the Trinity uh, Broadcasting uh, Network. I remember uh, that Paul Crouch made a statement uh, about eradicating the word Protestant from his vocabulary. I don't want to hear it. And then there's a picture of him. They even have it right there. I heard, in fact, I saw a picture of... Um, when they met with Pope John Paul II, I guess he, him and his, some uh, others in his team from TBN went over there uh, to meet him. And they were Google-wide. I mean, I'm looking, looking at this. They have that picture right there in TBN. And I heard on the second floor that there's also a picture of Mother Mary with the Google baby Jesus. Folks, it's everywhere. So this is what you're dealing with here, folks. So uh, when, when you're dealing with stuff like this, keep this in mind. Uh, the next time you hear your pastor tell you that it's okay to work with uh, the Roman Catholics, uh, that it's okay to uh, work with the charismatic Catholics, folks, remember this uh, passage of Scripture. 2 Corinthians six fourteen to 18, it says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness, and what concord hath Christ with Belial, or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Wow. So, uh, you know, this speaks, folks. We, we should have nothing to do. An unequal yoke in when you join with the Church of Rome with all of the doctrines of demons that I have recited for you in this video. Oh, yes. Come back to listen to this video, folks. If, you, if you're struggling, so, oh, I don't know what to do. My pastor, uh, well, well, folks, you have a choice to make. You're going to follow the Lord and his word, or you're going to follow the pastor, your favorite pastor, and his word. But if he's speaking things that are contrary to what the scriptures say, folks, then you have a choice to make. That's a choice that only uh, 
Uh, you can make, you know, I've spoken before about that uh, Pastor Ulf Ekman, you know, and um, that man was deceived. He had a church, a large church over there in uh, Sweden. And uh, the man basically was seduced by the Roman Catholic Church. And, you know, the people, what happened, folks, the... Um, the people started no noticing different things that were taking place. Now, this was a church, by the way, that spoke out against the Roman Catholic Church. And all of a sudden, you know, keep in mind that this was a church that was free of icons and crucifixes, religious symbols and, and everything else. But little by little, they, they realized that the teaching against the uh, Maria cult, the papism and traditions of men, had been removed from the Word of Life bookshelves and replaced by newer, more Catholic-friendly material, and so on and so forth. So, so they saw what was happening, folks, and they, they, they became very concerned. And uh, to make a, a long story short, you know, one Sunday, uh, the man made an announcement that him and his wife we're leaving, and they're going to join the Roman Catholic Church. Can you imagine this, folks? Let me give you a screenshot uh, from an article from the Catholic Herald. It says, Mega Church Pastor Ulf Ekman says, We need what the Lord has given to the Catholic Church to live fully as Christians. Whoa! Here's something from Wikipedia. It says, in 2014, Ekman, that's Ulf Ekman, and his family converted to Roman Catholicism. Listen to this. He claims that the Catechism of the Catholic Church is the best book he has ever read. Let me stop there, folks. Let me, maybe I'll take a picture, put this up on the screen. I own this, folks. Uh, I remember I was saved about five years when this book came out. Folks, it, it, it's depressing. It, it, it's a book of torment. And, and here he's saying it's the best book he's ever read. What? <laughs> so it's, it's filled with all the lies, the, the false doctrines of the Roman Catholic Church. And it also goes on to say in his 2015 book, Den Storta Uptaken, I can't read that, that's a different language. He claims that an important factor in his conversion to Catholicism was information about Medjugorje and Herzegovina, and subsequent visit to the place where Ulf and Bergita, that's his wife, met with Franciscan Yozo Zafko. Okay, now that name, by the way, Franciscan Yozo Zafko, I recognize that name because when we were into this Medjugorje thing, this was a man who was defending those apparitions. So people were coming against him, and he defended Medjugorje to the hilt. So, so here, um, this man... Ulf Ekman, this pastor of this large church, and he did many other things, folks. This is unbelievable stuff that he was seduced so easily, okay? Um, so he meets with this priest, whom, uh, like I said, we used to watch videos. We had people over our home. Look at this, Mary, she's appearing. So now he's seduced into the very thing that the Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, set me free and said, get out, which is exactly what I did, folks. So there you see right on the screen, here he is meeting with the Pope. Look look at him and his wife there. Look at the look on her face. Now, this is a man, keep in mind, he's called the Holy Father. Jesus said, call no man your father. The man knows that scripture, folks. He knows it's in the Bible. This is a man who said, if you don't love Mary and you don't pray the rosary, she won't give you the son. That's blasphemy. That's blasphemy, folks. This is a man, whenever he travels around the world, he prays before he leaves. He, he, he prays before the statue of Mary and asks for her protection. When he returns from the trip, he goes to that place and thanks her for her protection. Oh, yes. Do you see where I'm uh, heading here, folks? That is not the sound of a believer in Jesus Christ. Folks, when I came out of uh, the cult of Rome, it was all about Jesus. It was, that was it was for me, for my wife, and any other person I've known. If you've been truly born again of the Spirit, it's all about Jesus. You're not going to be talking about Mary the way this man talks about Mary. This is the cult of Roman Catholicism. I've told you the story before about the woman. I know I have new listeners that we met in the church lobby of uh, a, a, a place that we were going to, and, and how 
uh, we explained, we told her a testimony, we came out of the Roman Catholic Church, met the same lady a year later. And uh, then she said, hey, how you doing? She said, oh, I just joined the prayer group. I'm praying with uh, Roman Catholic Charismatics. And I looked at her, I said, hey, sister, you know, be careful. You know, before you know it, they're going to have you praying the rosary. She said to me, I feel sick. They already have me praying the rosary. Uh, that's a true story, folks. So it, that, that, it, it makes the point here of exactly what I'm, I'm talking about here, folks. You know, we, we did nursing home ministries we, when we were living in uh, Pennsylvania. We would do a ministry in this nursing home. I loved doing it because it was, it, it, it has this hall. It's, it's paid for. We didn't have to lay out any money. It's just air conditioning. You come in, you preach the word to these people. These are souls, folks. You know, wherever there's souls, folks, uh, that's good. You preach, okay? And the, and the opportunity. And so many, many times... We're preaching the word, and sometimes we'll be doing another service in New York. So something we're driving two to three hours into New York and doing a service in in the nursing home where Kathy's mom and eventually both of them, her mother and father, were. We're preaching our hearts out, folks, and I mean holding back nothing. Uh, I'm preaching to Jewish people, preaching to Catholic people, holding back nothing, and. Um, you know, there was another lady there. She, she had, uh, she was in New York, but she was from down south. You get to know these people. She was a, a Christian lady, and um, the same thing happened with her. We're, we're talking with her, and the next thing you know, uh, the Catholics who come in there because they let all different ministries come in there. Uh, they had her praying a rosary, and they come in with their Catholic Eucharist also, like Catholic Eucharistic ministers. This is this is reality, folks. So so this is what you, there's a battle that goes on constantly. Uh, for, for the truth. And, and I've seen it over and over and over again. In fact, that one particular uh, nursing home in Queens, we, we would preach. We wouldn't hold anything back. And then one time we were set to preach, and what they did, uh, one of the popes was in town. Uh, I forget which pope it was, but they, but they, they left a, a Daily News article, just the front page, with, with, the, with, with that, where we would pl place our equipment and stuff. I knew it was persecution. You see, because we spoke the truth to people. Oh, yes, we did. We spoke the truth. We didn't hold anything back for us. We, we don't want, we're going to be accountable one day, folks, for when we stand before God. Did you tell the people the truth? I don't want to fudge the gospel to make them feel good. I, I don't want to just say, let's sing some songs. I could have done that. I could have, let's just sing some songs. Yay. No, I didn't want to do that. In fact, they, 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 this ministry opportunity happened because we, we would uh, go there to visit Kathy's mom and they, they would have Sunday services and then more often than not, the people who were supposed to be there to do the service didn't show up. And we're like, huh? So we, we told the people, said, look, if you, have, if, you know, if you want, we'll do a service because nobody's here. The poor souls who, who wanted a service, now they're bringing in this little uh, cassette player and playing some music. <laughs> I said, look at this, Kat. Look at this. The, the, the people are coming here for the word of God, and, and now they're, they're robbed. They're, they're getting nothing, and this guy's coming out with some uh, uh, music that had nothing to do with Christianity. Nothing. So, uh, you know, God was good. Hallelujah. God was good. So we, I can tell you stories about the people we spoke to, including Jewish people, given given Bible tracts to, uh, what ministry opportunities, not even, in fact, not just in the main hall, when we would, uh, had, there was like a little day room, we did more ministry there, talking to people, because they'd be in their wheelchairs, you'd come and we would be sharing the word, giving out Bible tracts, it was pretty awesome, the way the Lord opened um, that door, so I, I'm going to leave it here, folks, I want you to know though, the next time you, you hear your well-known uh, pastor or ministry leader start talking about unity with the uh, Roman Catholic charismatic Catholics or even uh, the regular Catholics you, you remember what you heard here today and you might want to bring a top hat and a cane with you because you might be uh, in for a song and dance routine folks uh, because when you deal with stuff like this that's where the block comes upon the devil will come to try to stop the truth from going forth folks I've been saved since 1980 and folks, I know spiritual warfare. I know what happens when you speak the truth to people. Oh, yes. So uh, uh, I leave you with that, folks. And uh, don't forget what you heard here. So you be blessed and have a great day.